Hi folks, we're just getting started here. Um, let's give it a couple of minutes for for people to join. Okay, welcome to the uh, GitOps with um, Open Tofu and Terramate on uh, GitHub Actions Workshop. Um, as you can imagine, today we'll learn a little bit about uh, Open Tofu, um, um, Terramate, and uh, yeah, GitHub Actions, which you probably already know. A uh, um, few sentences about myself. Um, so, hey, um, I'm Soren. Um, I have an engineering background. I've been yeah, working with various ISC technologies for the past 10 years or so. And uh, I happen to be one of the co-founders here at Terramate. Um, so um, um, uh, we do all things uh, a Terraform and Open Tofu, ISC, Cloud Native um, and whatnot. And I uh, would love um, to get in touch with you guys. So if there's any questions, any suggestions, um, 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 all things tech that, you, that you'd like to talk about, really feel free to ping me here on, on X. Um, you can see my handle here, Soren Matios, or um, yeah, just give me a ping on LinkedIn. So always happy to connect. Um, quickly about um, uh, Terramate, so uh, the company that I'm, um, I'm I'm building here together with an amazing team in in Berlin. So we're an IC management platform for builders, um, meaning we give you the necessary tools um, um, to really design production grade um, environments with Terraform or Tofu um, um, in, in any CI CD. So um, we typically integrate um, with GitHub Actions, GitLab, Bitbucket Pipelines, et cetera. And there's a few things that um, um, and we provide, um, multiple solutions on open source a CLI that we will also be using today, um, as well as a, a cloud platform that comes with a, a free tier. And um, we focus on um, code generation, so Terraform and open Tofu code generation. Um, we will look into this in a minute too. Um, orchestration, um, which basically helps us to decide in pipelines what part of our open Tofu or Terraform architecture um, 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 to deploy. Observability. Um, which basically um, 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 yeah, helps our users and customers to understand who um, um, introduces changes to infrastructure as code, how does that develop over time. Um, um, uh, drift management here, uh, of course, plays a, a big role. And then asset management. So asset management really um, is meant to help folks to grab an understanding on you know, what what infrastructure resources are managed, um, um, sometimes in one repository, oftentimes in many repositories. Now, so um, quickly about Open Tofu. I'm sure all of you know Open Tofu. Um, um, it's basically an open source alternative to uh, uh, to Terraform. Um, so I won't dive uh, too much into the specifics on why Open Tofu actually exists. Um, if you're interested in that, um, there's another talk scheduled for um, um, tomorrow at PlatformCon where I'll be talking about this. Um, but think of this Open Tofu really as an yeah, open open source um, um, as Terraform's license was was changed alternative to to Terraform. And um, the nice thing here is like if you are on Terraform version one five point seven or any other version below that, um, you can basically, um, yeah, if you're on an older version, upgrade to Terraform 1.5.7 first and then migrate to Open Tofu by basically just replacing the binary, um, um, which means that it's a drop-in replacement um, for Terraform 1.5.7 and uh, Open Tofu is compatible with all providers out there, all plugins, all modules and most integrations. Um, and Open Tofu also has uh, a registry. Um, which is available here at opentofu.org slash registry. So uh, yeah, you can see um, and that is um, open tofu specific providers available, um, 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 which should be of great help whenever discovering the ecosystem. So um, what will we um, what will we learn today? Um, quite a bit. And um, yeah, feel free to um, always ask questions in the Q&A. Um, again, um, I guess for the next around 60 to 90 minutes, we'll be designing stuff here and implementing code. Um, and um, I'll explain uh, most of the steps um, or all of the steps. Um, but if there's anything that, that you would like me to dive into, any specific questions, then just shoot in the Q&A um, and I'll make sure to, um, um, to do a deep dive. 
Um, so basically, and this is four big topics today that I would like to show. Um, um, so basically, GitOps um, for Open Tofu with GitHub Actions. Um, so we want to design a pipeline here that basically helps us to preview and deploy changes introduced by pull request um, using the merge and apply strategy. And um, um, yeah, in addition to that, um, we also want to look at uh, the Terramate orchestration and code generation. And that's very useful if you work in, um, in, in, in Terraform or Tofu projects that um, basically and basically contain multiple state files. Yeah? So it's considered to be a best practice whenever managing infrastructure as code at a scale that, hey, instead of having everything in a single, in Terraform and OpenTOF, we call this root module, right? That's maybe in this talk, use the abbreviation stack for it. Whenever you manage all your resources, all your environments in a single stack, then um, you you end up having long lasting CI CD pipelines and, and blast radios. And it's an ownership model that is difficult. Um, or no ownership model that is, uh, which is difficult. Um, so uh, we'll ex explore a little bit on how to overcome those challenges. Um, um, yeah, we also want to um, make sure that changes can be previewed in pull request um, and um, be a part of the approval um, approval process. Yeah? So typically, if um, whenever you change something, infrastructure is very fragile, right? And, um, and typically destructive changes to infrastructure can have catastrophic causes. Uh, let's think in terms of uh, you know destroying a DNS entry or a production database. Um, even though there's certain ways of pre preventing um, those changes, um, and typically we want to spot those inside of a pull request, right? So there's two ways of doing this, of course, um, reviewing the code. Yeah? Um, but as the code in Terraform is declarative, um, the best way for us to actually understand the implications is by looking at the plans. Uh, so Terraform and Open Tofu um, and produce this plan, which is a diff, um, explaining um, your changes and, and the impact on the actual uh, cloud providers. Um, and uh, yeah, that's of of great help when um, whenever doing infrastructure as code lifecycle management and and change change management through pull request. And then we will also want to look into um, um, a Terramic Cloud and what this actually is, um, um, because I think we're solving a bunch of really uh, neat problems here um, for um, Open Tofu and and also Terraform users. Um, and so, for example, I talked about the observability, um, asset management, drift management, and then Slack notifications, those kind of things. Uh, um, to just quickly um, align on the workflow here, um, and then we'll dive right in. Um, so the workflow that we'll be using here today is called Merge and Apply, right? And there's different ways of rolling out changes in the... Um, 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 open tofu and, and Terraform ecosystem. So um, one could think about deploying changes inside of a pull request. And then once this is successful, merging the actual pull request back to main. Uh, this is called apply and merge. And um, the other, I would say a little bit more um, a popular process here is merge and apply. Whereas um, actually on merge back to the stable branch, which is GitOps principle, right? We run and apply. Um, both workflows have their pros and cons. Um, the, um, the, main, um, the main reason um, why I typically personally prefer merge and apply is it's a lot easier to manage, right? Whenever you deploy from inside pull request, you need to understand, oh, are there conflicting pull requests? Um, are there any conflicting deployments? And um, that can't happen if you um, only um, only run a deploy or merge back to main because um, those are done sequentially on a per commit basis, right? So um, enough slides. Um, let me make sure that um, I'm just gonna put this over here, the Zumba. Um, I have the open tofu documentation open here. Yeah? And I also created um, a totally blank repository um, before this call, uh, before this workshop. So what we want to do is we actually want to start um, bootstrapping this repository 
Um, so you will be able to, in, in here, Terramate.io, and then it's called PlatformCon Open Tofu Terramate Workshop. Um, let me share this here in the chat. One second. All right, you should see this now. Um, you should be able to um, 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 to follow me in there. Um, <laughs> slides are pretty, demos are beautiful, yeah. Um, I would say demos, uh, demos should typically not take that long. Um, we'll take a little bit of time here um, to do things um, step by step. Yeah. Um, okay, so I also too, have this um I have this repository already here checked out um, um in my VS code uh, um and I have a bunch of plugins installed here to basically use um, um open tofu um, um open tofu syntax highlighting teramate and and whatnot uh, and uh, what I'm gonna do here um I'm gonna open the terminal and please let me know if um you feel that um let me see my screen is shared it's also the right window thanks god um and please let me know um if the font is too small if you can't see what i'm doing so um in that case i'll just increase it um so first of all going back here um we want to um install open tofu right um to basically be able to um, um yeah use it and as, um, if you look here at the documentation, opentofu.org, docs, um, there's basically different ways of uh, doing this. Um, I could use um, um, brew here. Um, but um, the one tip that I want to give you, and um, uh, that's already a little bit exotic, but um, actually quite an awesome package manager, package manager is called ASDF. Uh, and ASDF is really a neat package manager for managing multiple versions of uh, things such as uh, Open Tofu, Terraform, and um, and also Terramate, uh, Node.js, and and whatnot. So I use this all the time. And uh, the great thing is that you can use it not only locally but also in CI/CD. Yeah. Um, by the way, the Terramate GitHub Actions does support ASDF. Um, and um, yeah, others do too. So um, let's look at this. I can basically say, hey, ASDF, um, local, and then um, um, open tofu latest. Yeah? So now what this will do here, this will create a tools.version file um, in my uh, repository, right? And now if I look here at, um, let's say I run tofu version, you can see that um, this is the, the, the latest version in here, 1.7.2. Let's actually um, let's actually look at if if this is the truth. Um, yeah, this was released last week. Awesome, and um, um, I also want to install Terramate, as we will use it eventually at some point. Um, so let's do um, ASDF local Terramate um, uh, latest. Yeah, awesome. So latest Terramate version has been added here too. You can see uh, this is uh, zero. 8.4. Um, I think we have a release candidate for the, the, the dot, uh, nine version around the corner, but um, um, that shouldn't be too much of our concern here. So um, to start working, I'm basically just opening up a branch here, um, and I call this bootstrap repository. Uh, repository. 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 There we go. All right. And I'm going to... Um, I'm gonna check here my um, um my workspace my my Git and uh, I'll add this file and add a new commit. Just say okay, feed at ASDF feed at sorry open tofu and teramate via ASDF something like that. So great. Okay, meaning I've just installed teramate and open tofu and um, it's seven twenty two. Uh, that's great. We already have the dependencies installed. Um, let's keep on going. Yeah? What I want to do is, um, in this demo, I basically um, um, want to do two different things. Yeah? I um, want to basically, let's see here, let me use Excalidraw. Um, uh, maybe in a private window. Uh, let me see how I can use this or or not. Next, Kali draw. 
Um, so I can draw some stuff here, start drawing. Awesome. So um, what we want to do is we basically want to come up with two different root models, two different stacks that we manage a bunch of infrastructure resources in. And um, one of them is called uh, a dev. Uh, and the other one is called um, prod. Uh, and they will probably both have the same resources. But uh, what we want to understand here is like, hey, um, so when um, um, whenever we touch something in production, we also um, only ever want to consider this in the pipeline. Uh, um, the problem here is in, in, in traditional Terraform, we basically don't, and in traditional Terraform um, Tofu, we basically don't have any way of detecting um, and orchestrating different uh, root modules. So Terraform and OpenTofu CLI are both missing that. Uh, and, and that's something that um, I think sooner or later, every single project, like once you mature from really just bootstrapping a bunch of infrastructure resources, you think about how to manage different accounts, right? And how to separate concerns, how to basically bundle um, a bunch of infrastructure resources. And um, um, we'll look into this um, today. Um, so what I'm gonna do for that is, um, I'm gonna create a directory here called stacks. Uh, and now what I want to do is with, um, 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 I basically want to create those stacks here. So those two environments, dev and prod. Uh, and um, for us to understand how we do that, we will be using Terramate for this. So Terramate is an addition on top of Open Tofu that all it does is it basically, in very simple terms, helps you to orchestrate um, Open Tofu root models, Terraform root models, and you can do a bunch of things here, such as code generation. We'll look at this one by one before we dive into the workflows. All right, so let's do this. So Terramate version. Now uh, we can see, aha, uh -huh, um, I have Terramate version um, um, uh, 084 installed here. So this um, worked. Let's create a bunch of stacks. So Terramate create stacks dev. I call this maybe um, platform con dev. Now, uh, awesome. And then I'm going to do the same for prod. Prod, platform, con, prod. Awesome. So what you can see here, what has happened is basically um, Terramate stacks are just directories that contain this file in here, stack.tm.hcl. And the reason for that is that in Terramate, and that's a, that requires a little shift uh, a mental model um, of your mental model, um, the orchestration behavior and the behavior of a stack, uh, such as how's the stack called, um, when do you want to execute the stack, is configured directly at the stack. So there's no centralized kind of YAML or so where we configure all of this, um, but you can configure this inline um, and directly at the stacks, and it makes it very, very lightweight. And it also allows you to copy a stack, for example, from to basically just copy paste one environment to another. Yeah. Um, if you look at other platforms, um, like orchestration platforms um, um, in, in the market, there's a bunch that um, um, that exist. Um, you basically always ever need to configure uh, the stack first um, using GUI or Terraform provider or so before you can do stuff. And that is very cumbersome. It's not necessarily wrong. Uh, that's not what I'm trying to say, but what I'm trying to say is it's cumbersome and for most use cases maybe just not the suitable model. So we're trying to rethink this here by shifting um, those configurations left directly in the code because the philosophy that we follow is everything is code, right? But you don't necessarily need an additional Terraform provider just to configure your stack. All right. So if we look here at those directories, you see two directories, dev and prod, as well as one stack.tm.hcl each. Yeah. And what you can also see is that on the top right here of my IDE, um, there's basically a notification coming up um, and it says, hey, connected to Terramate language server. Yeah. So the reason for that is um, basically, um, um, you can see this um, 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 file name here, .tm.hcl, we use HCL, HashiCorp configuration language. 
uh, which is a configuration language used for all Tofu and Terraform and, and Packer and whatnot, right? Um, to configure stacks. So in here, uh, we have a name. The name was passed um, as an argument, right? We have a description that was per default is set to the name, if not explicitly set. We don't really need to see. And then unique ID. Uh, and we will see in a minute um, why this um, ID actually is helpful and why we use this. First, let's do the following. Let's add this to our Git repository. So I'm just going to add this here. Um, and the reason why I want to do this is so later on, um, we can go through every single commit and basically understand the necessary steps um, that we've taken here in order to get that project up and running. Right. So git commit add two stacks dev and prod. Awesome. Now everything is checked in to git. All right. So now if we look at how does this relate to open tofu? Huh? Let's forget about state for now. Let's forget about um, um, providers configuration for now. Um, let's just look at how we could basically create a very simple resource in each stack. So what we would probably do, um, give me a second just to wrap my head around this. Yeah. Uh, um. All right, so what we'll probably do is basically we just add a file here, main.tf. Uh, um, it's interesting, the Terraform logo occurs here. We're using open tofu still, um, but basically as it's a drop-in replacement, like all this styling in VS Code and, and everything defaults to Terraform. Even the configuration syntax in open tofu, like if you were to set the minimum required open tofu version, you do this by using the, the Terraform keyword. So it's confusing, but um, it's it's actually quite nice because as long as I'm on version one hundred five or seven, I can just go backward and forward, um, um, yeah, without having backwards incompatible changes. Right. Problem here is, of course, if you're in Terraform, I don't know one or eight, and you use features that have been introduced later down the road, it's a little problematic because the projects diverge, right, and uh, you will not be necessarily able to migrate backward and forward. All right, so let's look at this file. And um, I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna create a, a, a null. Uh, sorry, a null. This is a resource here. Um, we call this a dev. Awesome. Yeah. And now I want to do the same. So I go into the prod stack, and I add a null resource here that I call prod. Yeah. All right. So. First of all, in order to understand how this works, I can basically just go and, and navigate into this directory by saying, okay, change directory, stacks dev, tofu is installed, tofu in it. Let's see what happens. What you can see here is we have not configured any remote status. So we have not configured any um, providers huh, that we will do in a minute. So basically, I navigate into the stack and I can natively execute tofu in it in here. Yeah. Awesome. And you can see what happens is it bootstraps this Terraform directory, which then contains the, the provider. So here, the denial provider will be detected automatically. And open tofu will download this and put this into the Terraform directory. Yeah. Um, and this is why... You know, even I get confused sometimes in this talk because everything is always called Terraform, but then I use open tofu as a binary or tofu as a binary. So please um, bear with me if, uh, yeah, if I use the wrong uh, name here sometimes. But I want to make sure that yeah, you really understand um, step by step here what I'm doing, right? And I could also go yeah, and navigate into prod and do the same in here. Now, and now I have two independent root modules with local state um, that um, each have a resource, a null resource um, declared. Uh, let's look a little bit at our git status here because what we do not want to do, we just want to make sure that we do not check in any of those um, uh, Terraform directories here 
uh, any local state. There is no state yet because we haven't uh, applied anything yet. Um, and as you can see, there's a pre-configured git ignore in here. So this is just by when you create a repository on GitHub, you can basically say, hey, use this, um, use this template, right? And uh, I basically just use the Terraform template here, which one-to-one um, -one maps onto OpenTOFU. And um, you can see it creates those log files. Um, I honestly do not think we need those. So let's just put them in here in the git ignore. And now we can see, so I navigate back to the root. Now we can see, aha, um, we have a modified file here, the, the git ignore. So we'll add this, git ignore, and then git commit, add terraform. Uh, let's call this tofu to be fair. Open tofu log files to the get ignore. All right. Um, how about if I want to do this in both stacks at the same time without navigating into the stacks? Uh, again, we're still talking about the basics. Automation will follow in a minute. Still enough time to go. So I can say terramate list. What this does, it basically gives me a list of all stacks managed into my projects. And now what's very important here to understand is we can have as many stacks as we want, but a root module is only ever a stack in Terramate if it contains this .tm.hcl file, which is either created when we create a new stack or if you want to onboard Terramate to any existing open tool for Terraform project, you can say, hey, Terramate create all Terraform. Yeah? So this works for Terraform as well as open tofu. And it will then basically look at root modules available in your repository and create those stack.tm files for you. And that allows you to use full capabilities of Terramate, meaning if I want to offboard Terramate here and just, you know, be able to use Tofu natively, I can just delete those files and I end up being in a native environment. So what I'm trying to explain is that Terramate is this lightweight kind of CLI, yeah, or lightweight tool that runs on top of oh, Tofu, um, Terraform, and Terragrunt, but it never requires you to do a shift to terminate specific syntax. We do not touch any of your existing configuration. Yeah? Um, and that's quite nice because it means you can just onboard and offboard it as you wish, and there's no lock-in, yeah? there's no risk of trying this out. And um, it basically allows you, um, yeah, less, less YAML, more fun, I agree. And it basically, um, it basically allows you to try things out and zero, zero business risk, right? You don't end up doing stuff for two weeks and then like, oh no, I'm not happy with Terramate. Uh, I can't offboard anymore because now I adopted Terramate specific syntax. Um, all right, let's do the next thing here. We will basically add those stacks to Git. Git add. Git commit, hey, add some, add a null resource to each stack. And now what I want to show is, okay, we learned how to basically change directory and navigate into each of those stacks, but that doesn't really make sense if I have a hundred stacks, right? Like then I need to decide um, either locally or in CICD what stacks to orchestrate, et cetera. It's not really the experience that I'm looking for, right? So, and so we're following. Let's orchestrate tofu in it in both stacks sequentially. We can do this with Teramid run, yeah, saying tofu in it. Let me try this. So now what you can see here. Terramate basically navigates into stack dev first and it runs tofu in it in there. And now once this is finished, that's why I said sequential execution. And the reason why I elaborate on this concept is, is because this is really how we will supercharge ultra performant GitHub Actions pipelines because we cannot only do this sequentially, but we can also do this in parallel with unlimited parallelism. 
um, which we'll look into in a minute, and with something that we call change detection. And let's look at this in a second too. So you can see here, the stack step first, stack prod second. All right. So now, how would this look like if we run a plan? Let's do this. Tofu plan. So you can see that it does the same. It runs Tofu plan natively huh? in both stacks. Of course, if I run any other command here, PWD, it does that too. Uh, or I don't know, hello world. Uh, I believe this is what we all learned first when started programming. It does that too. And that's really, really nice because you can basically orchestrate whatever tooling here, right? You can use InfraCross or Chekhov or like any batch script that you wrote and orchestrate this inside of your stacks, right? So we learn how to do this sequentially. And sequential execution is great, and it works in smaller projects. Um, but sometimes you want to do things in parallel, right? So for me to do that, I can just say, hey, do this in parallel using five threads. Huh? If I use parallel with one thread, again, it does it sequentially. Now, if I use five threads, the returns here, the output is mixed up because we use multi-threading, right? Um, this is where later on Terramic Cloud will become sexy um, and helpful because like, you know, we can execute big code bases with 30 threads, but then in Terramic Cloud, we see everything in a sorted way, right? Um, but let's continue with the basics first. So next, what I want to do is let me think about what I want to do next. Um, I want to basically show change detection and then we go into pipeline design. So for the first time, I will basically create a pull request here inside of the repository. Huh? And I'm using the, by the way, this is the GitHub um, MCLI here. So this says, hey, GitHub, create a new pull request. Um, bootstrap. Bootstrap repository or bootstrap project is more appropriate, I guess. And we'll do this in the browser. Um, all right. So let me open up the browser here. And what we can see is that um, there's no checks or so whatsoever that run here. Um, but I will merge this back to main. Um, so I don't have any branch protection settings or so set up. Um, can stacks be opted out in the stack.tm.hcl? What do you mean by that? Like opted out for the orchestration? Um, if that's the case, then yes. You you have so orchestration. The way that this works is graph based approach, um, and you can basically filter this graph. I will also look into this um, um, in a second. I can give you um, uh, some ideas here. Um, Sean, if that doesn't answer your question, um, then, um, uh, please let me know. Okay. It's another question. Let's just look at this. The parallelism is powerful, but if you manage multiple resources in each stack, you could have the small blast radius and occasionally you may want to exclude pieces safely. And so, oh yeah, you can do that. Yeah. You can, you can definitely filter stacks and only execute specific stacks. Uh, you can use, te you can use text for that or change detection, which we'll look in a minute now. Um, 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 and I think that it will make a little bit more sense. So I will, um, just check out the main branch here, pull in, get pull origin main. Uh, and now what I want to do is I basically, um, <laughs> I basically want to create a third stack that, that we call maybe Q and A, uh, and I want to show you how we can use the change detection to only execute this. Uh, all right, for that, we have a command, Terramate, it's in the experimental space, clone, stack staff, maybe to stacks Q and A. And what this is doing is um, it basically copies 
everything inside of a stack. It does not update the name. I mean, you can do this via the, the, the CLI, of course. Um, let me do this manually for now. Um, but it sets a new unique ID here and it re-triggers code generation, which I will show you in a second too, right? Um, so what we have here now is this is a code, this is an ID B2A. This is an ID CA3 at the end, All right? Awesome. What I'm gonna do, and also we have the resources here in here. Let me just rename this to QA. But you can, by the way, always dynamically set those names. I'll show this to you too later down the road. And um, so what I'm gonna do, hey, QA stack, get status, get add stacks QA. Yeah. Um, so now I commit this feed at a Q and a stack. Uh, so now what I want to understand is how many stacks do I manage in this project? Terramate list. Um, shows me dev, prod, Q and a. Um, with Terramate run, I can now say tofu in it. And I'm almost sure this will fail. Oh, no, it will not because I don't have the safeguards configured, so it doesn't matter. Basically, what I'm doing here is I'm running, again, Tofu in it, in the dev stack, in the prod stack, and then in the new Q&A stack. But to be absolutely honest, actually, I have not introduced any changes to the prod and, and dev stack, so maybe I only want to execute this in Q&A. So now I could say Terramate run, change the directory to stacks Q and A and run tofu in it in here. Uh, but that doesn't really help us. Oh, there's a missing character here. But that doesn't really help us because then in CICD, I would like kind of, kind of compose those commands. So what I can do is, again, with list, I show all stacks. If I add list changed, then I get a representation of all stacks that contain changes in the current commit branch of pull request. And why is this helpful? So this is helpful because I can say terminate run changed tofu in it. And now the change detection basically says, hey, filter this graph of stacks, right? We create a graph and stacks can be nested and like to, to crazy amount of levels and whatnot. Um, but filter this graph, only select stacks that have changed and now execute Tofu in it inside of those. And this is exactly what we'll be using later in CI/CD to understand um, 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 to understand um, um, what stacks have changed and to only execute those in our CI/CD pipeline so we keep the runtime short and we keep the blast radius short and we keep the build manage consumption short, right? Because it does not make any sense to, unless you explicitly want that, right? But it doesn't make any sense other than that um, to um, 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 run on your entire um, project unless changes are there, right? Awesome. Okay, so the last thing that I want to show here is um, we will probably work with a local backend today. We don't need for a bunch of null resources. Um, 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 maybe we do create a remote state. Let's see how far we'll make it. But what I want to configure here is I basically want to now configure the minimal version of open tofu in all stacks. So let's go into the open tofu docs and let's look here at the version constraints. So no example. Okay, so the required version settings in the Terraform block. Let's do this. Um, I will now just go into a stack here and add a terraform.tf file. And now I'm gonna add a terraform block here. Um, okay, great. It already uh, auto completes this for me. Um, code pilot. And uh, let's remind ourselves of version we are on here, 1.7.2 and I just put this in here. Yeah. So this basically restricts um, Tofu 
Uh, again, we're using Terraform, same um, um, same configuration parameter here, to version 1.7.2. And what's going to happen is that Tofu will check this at runtime. And if you use any other version in it, it will complain and say, no, this is not possible. So, for example, if we are to set this to, I don't know, version 5.0, and now I'm going to go into the stack, stacks, dev, Tofu in it, and it should complain. See? And it says, oh, this is an unsupported uh, uh, Tofu version. Similar, if I orchestrate this with Terramate, and I say, hey, Tofu in it, we will also just get an, sorry, we will also just get an error. So, by the way, this error that we see here, um, Terramate has a bunch of um, um, built-in um, built safeguards. So look at the docs here. This is really cool, actually. Um, so if you look at the docs and orchestration, disable safeguards. And um, the reason why we do that is that if you work in an environment <laughs> where changes should go through the ICD, then Terramate will basically tell you like, hey, you're just trying to execute Terraform or open tool for apply locally, but your branch and your work tree is out of sync with your repository, with your remote repository. Um, so per default, we say like, hey, you should probably not be able to do that. Hence, we deny it. Huh? And we forbid it, sorry. Um, but you can disable those. And we have multiple checks here. Basically, we can say like, hey, all Git-related checks, so we check if the uh, uh, if untracked files in the repository, uncommitted files, or if the remote is out of sync, um, and then for outdated code. Huh? Let's um, check how we do that. So we just create a terramate.tm file here. We'll use this file later on, which we use to basically configure our project. And for now, we just say, you know what? Let's disable, let's disable all checks here. Yeah? And now if I run tofu in it again, now it works. Yeah? So this um, um this repository's untracked files safeguard um disappears. But then of course, open tofu complaints because we have configured it explicitly to version 1.5, right? Whereas in our repository we use 1.7.2. So this is helpful, but to be honest, if now I need to go and copy paste this file um, in uh, all three stacks, that doesn't really make any sense, right? That's a lot of code duplication. So what I want to do is I want to use something called code generation terminate. Yeah? And I can do that with the following with the following command. So let's just say I'm gonna add a config.tm.hcl here. .tm.hcl files in Terramate are kind of merged at runtime, similar to what Terraform does, right? Terraform just looks at all the files in a, in a, in a, in a single level of the hierarchy at runtime. Um, it basically uh, merges those to a, into a single configuration and applies it, right? And um, I'm going to say in here, like, hey, we use something called the generate HCL statement, and we want to generate a file that's called terraform.tf with the following content. Uh, and let's just put the content in here. I run, so I run a uh, command here that is called terramate fmt. It's helpful for formatting terramate config. And now I want to set this to version 1.7.2. Uh, and what this will do in very simple terms. This will look at all your stacks and generate this file in there. So if I run Terramate generate, you can see that Terramate detects that we have three stacks, right? And it adds those files in here, right? It also puts an adder in here saying like, hey, this is a Terramate generated file, right? And set this to version 1.7.2, right? So now if I run tofu in it again using the orchestration, it will pass. So what we have done here, let's look at these dash pop. Okay, so let's add this to our branch. We have basically feed use terramate code generation to add open tofu version restrictions in all stacks. Awesome. 
I'm going to add a new pull request here. Add QA stack and code generation. We merge this and then we should start looking at the pipelines. In the meantime, if there's any questions, I know it's a lot, um, feel free to shoot. So this is merged git checkout main, git pull origin main, checking, pulling in the latest changes, right? Very, very minimal Terraform uh, open tofu working environment here. All right. Now um, let's look into something a little bit more proper. We actually want to start creating our first workflow. So workflows and GitHub actions are always in this, I think they're always in this dot GitHub um, um, directory here. And um, let me just quickly reorder my notes. Um, and what we want to do here is we basically want to first create a simple workflow um, that um, just installs um, 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 Terraform, uh, sorry, Open Tofu and Terramate, and then it it, it creates it creates um, a, a change um, a preview every time we open a pull request, and um, we basically um, and we basically add changes to our to our environment here. Yeah, so let's do this. Um, I'm gonna add another directory here called Workflows. Uh, so this is how I basically uh, declared that this is the point of configuration in GitHub Actions for defining workflows. And then I'm adding a file here called preview.yaml. Uh, um, so let's give this a name. Uh, <clears throat> we give this a name and we call this, uh, hey, open tofu preview. Uh, and also um, we want to um, add an on trigger here, and we want this to run uh, basically. Let me add this. Oh man, pull request. I should disable copilot at some point here. Uh, pull request for all branches um, that um, um, a point back um, the point back to main. Yeah. So whenever I open a pull request um, um, from any branch that points against the main branch, um, we want this. Um, um, this workflow to trigger, right? All right. Um, so those are the the kind of con this is the kind of configuration on how we want those um, pipelines to trigger the trigger behavior. And now we actually define the jobs. So what I would do here is uh, I would basically say like, hey, we can define one or many jobs inside this pipeline, and um, I start by basically um, defining this job that we call uh, a preview. Um, I don't know why this always puts two spaces in here, uh, four spaces in here, but I should just reconfigure this at some point. So let me um, let me name this maybe um, plan um, open open tofu changes in uh, changed stacks, uh, and I'm actually gonna open this up a little bit bigger here. So now um, what I want to do is I want to give this um, um, I want to give this a specific machine type. Um, so this should run on Ubuntu. Uh, and that's a very basic pipeline. Like now this is a pipeline with a job, and the job doesn't do anything. Right. Um, so now for me to actually do stuff here, I can add steps. Uh, and um, let me show you how this works. Um, interestingly. Um, Copilot already does some uh, very interesting autocomplete here, but we're definitely not working with Node, um, so npm is not um, not required. Um, so as a first um, as a first step, we probably want to um, just uh, check out the repository. Um, so let's do that. We write a step here. We call this uh, checkout, and then there is a GitHub actions um, from GitHub. That is called uh, GitHub Actions Checkout. That we can basically this one here, that we can basically use to check out the uh, source code um, in our repository. 
Yeah. And we do this. And um, I'm just going to copy paste this from my notes now. So we get a little bit up to speed here. Uh, so what this is what this is doing basically it just says hey check out the the repository uh, associated to this um, um to this pipeline uh, it's associated to this repository and i will also provide some permissions here and um permissions to this workflow um where i basically say like hey from inside of this pull request i want to be able uh, to do certain things i want to be able to to write to the pull request maybe a comment or so um, yeah, I wanted to be able to create an OIDC token and um, and and whatnot. Yeah. Next thing, what we want to do is we basically want to install our tooling. Yeah. And so what we will do is we will first add. Let's add this here. We will first add. Um, there is some. Let's just put this in the right order. Okay, here we go. Uh, correctly aligned. Um, so we will install the Terramate action here. And the interesting thing is Terramate, I said this already, uh, supports um, ASDF. And it will also add ASDF here, right? And what we say is like, hey, ASDF. Um, so align this correctly. Um, ASDF should then also install the Open Tofu plugin here. Yeah? So this basically installs the Open Tofu plugin in ASDF and it installs the right version. So now um, let's do a few things in here. Yeah? Um, to start um, um, uh, to start designing this, um, we basically let me think about it. Just do a few steps. Um, so how about we just start? by um, listing uh, all stacks that have changed inside of um, and the current pipeline run. So list changed stacks. Uh, and now I can say, okay, run Terramate, Terramate list. See, I want to run this in stacks. Um, I actually don't even need this changed. So this should basically give me a list of all stacks, all change stacks here inside of this pipeline. And then what I want to do next, I basically want to run a, so run, run open tofu in it. And then I also want to run an open tofu plan. Huh? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, hey, Terramate, run Tofu in it. And then let's put this in here, Terramate run Tofu plan. Okay. Very simple pipeline. And all this is doing now, it should basically install the dependencies, open Tofu Terramate. It should give me a list of change stacks. And then it should run Tofu in it and Tofu plan. So let's keep on moving here. Get checkout at rudimentary um, plan pipeline. Awesome. Git at Git at GitHub. Git commit um, CI at a plan a plan preview pipe line for tofu now oh, and now we create a pull request all right let's look at the repository pull request we can see that this is running here the pipeline is running too. If I look here at the pipeline, we can see what happens, right? Uh, let me zoom in so you can all see that. Um, but basically, it installs Terramate, then installs ASDF, it installs Open Tofu, it installs the right version here. Then it says, hey, um, give me a list of all change stacks, but there are no change stacks, right? And then I actually have a mistake here in my pipeline. Funny enough, I forgot to add a change. Uh, 
parameter. So let's do this now. Um, so what has happened is that we obviously do not want to run tofu in it and tofu plan in all stacks always, but only in the changed. The ones that changed. So I need to add the changed parameter here. And now this should work. So, and I couldn't also say, by the way, um, if, um, let me think about this real quick. Um, so I think what I can do is I can skip those steps. Um, if there is no output, uh, if there is no output from this step here, so I can give this an ID saying um, list changed stacks. And now I can say like, hey, only run tofu in it and tofu plant. So those steps, um, if there are actual changes, um, and so if you have to take the change, uh, change stacks, and the way of doing this is by saying um, steps, and then I can use the ID here, list changed stacks. Uh, and I believe it's uh, outputs and then standard out. This should work. We think about this. Yeah. So this will, this will basically now tell those pipeline steps to only run whenever we have a standard out here and this will only return a list if there's an actual list of changed stacks all right adding this git commit uh, ci i don't know add change parameter to tofu init and tofu plan so now um let's say um we push this git push origin at rudimentary plan pipeline. All right, let's go back to our repository here. We can see second commit, the pipeline triggers again. Installs, terminate, tofu, and yeah. So what we can see here is no stacks changed, hence no tofu in it, hence no tofu plan. Okay, let's merge this and let's continue and see how this actually works. All right, I merge this back to main. I go back to my project, git checkout main. Now I pull in the changes, git pull origin main. Huh? Awesome. So now what I want to do is, before we finish this pipeline, we'll quickly look at how this looks um, if we add a change here. Yeah? So I'm just going to go into a stack, Q&A. Let's say I just add another resource, another resource here. Uh, Q&A, two. Sounds like this. Get status, get add. Um, I create a new branch. Um, introduce a change to the Q and A stack, the longest branch name of this word. Get status, get add, get commit, feed, add a new now resource to the Q and A stack. GitHub pull request create. We create a new pull request. All right, so let's do this. And let's see what's happening here. And then we should uh, supercharge the pipeline a little bit. The pipeline is really boring. Um, we can add all sorts of stuff here, like static code analysis, make sure that like your code is well formatted and stuff. Um, so let's see what happens. This should now detect the change. Um, awesome. There's the plan. 
and that's it. So this is good. Um, we can now see the plan inside of GitHub Actions here, but that doesn't really help us too much, right? So it would mean like, oh, whenever I open up a pull request, right, I need to actually look into the specific pipeline run here to um, um and to then understand um how the plan looks like. So ideally, we want to have this as some sort of comment inside of the um inside of the pipeline. Um, the um the challenge here is that in GitHub Actions, um, there's a certain amount of character. It's a lot. It's sixty thousand or sixty thousand something that we can add as a comment to the to the um to the pull request. But there's a better way of doing this. Uh, and now we'll look into the specifics of Terra Made Cloud because so far we've only used a bunch of Open Tofu. We've only used a bunch of um, um, a bunch of TerraMate CLI. Let's look at the cloud. Let's see how we can do plans with the cloud here. So, what I want to do is I go to cloud.terramate.io, uh, and I want to create a new organization here. So I'm already logged in. Yeah, um, and let's call this organization platform con. Uh, yeah, platform con. Um, and let's create this. I'm not going to invite any of you to here for now, but I can do later. And, um, I look at this interface here in Terra, uh, make cloud. And there's a few things I want to do now. Yeah? Um, first of all, I want to go to the CLI and I want to say Terra made cloud login. So now what this does is I'm just moving this here because it opened in my other window. I want to log in using an account. And now I'm logged in into uh, with the CLI to Terramate Cloud, right? And um, we'll look in a little bit into what to do here. If I look back at the cloud, there's a bunch of things here. So we have in stack inventory, you can see there's nothing in here. We have deployments. There's also nothing in here. It's a brand new organization, pull requests, and we have integrations. Yeah. The first thing that I probably want to do is to install the GitHub app because the GitHub app basically takes care of sending comments back to our pull request based on plans that I sent to Terramate Cloud. For that, though, I first need to send the plans. So what I'm going to do is I look here at my settings general and i can put a github trust here and it's very important to consider because in terra we don't use any long level credentials at least not as of now so what i can say is like hey we want the cli to be able to communicate with terra cloud from all repositories that live in this terra io organization uh, the github trust for that is Terramate.io. This will now create an OIDC provider in Terramate Cloud, and we can basically send data and pull data from Terramate Cloud from every workload, uh, every CI CD um, pipeline run inside of our Terramate.io organization. Um, awesome. So now for me to basically push data to Terramate Cloud, we always do this with the CLI, yeah? And let's look a little bit into how we do this. So first of all, I'm gonna merge this pull request here. Yeah? Now I'm gonna pull in the new changes. Main, get pull, origin main. Booms. Next. What I want to do, I want to basically, um, I want to basically do, let me think about what I actually want to do here. The easiest way of syncing the data to Terramic Cloud is to probably run a drift run. Uh, so I can basically say like, hey, here's an, here's an amount of stacks. Here's a list of stacks. Sync them. Um, 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 to Terramate Cloud. So what I'm going to do is, um, let's say, Terramate run. Uh, 
and now I give it a flag. Sync, drift, status. And I give it another flag. Tofu, plan, file. Huh? And I say like, okay, this is a run. We orchestrate open tofu as type sync drift status. So now Terramate CLI will know that this needs to be synced to the cloud. Yeah? And it should use a plant file in each stack that we call drift.tfplan. Yeah? And we basically say, hey, um, do this in every single stack using the tofu plan out drift.tf plan. Uh, oh, yeah. And then detailed exit, I think, exit code, something like that. Uh, let me detailed exit code. Okay. So, might be good for us to, oops, to look into this in a minute. Um, before I can do that, what I need to do is I basically need to configure my organization. So this organization here, PlatformCon, as my organization for this repository. And um, how I can do that is by, so it's all in the docs, by basically saying like, okay, TerraMate config, uh, configure the cloud here, use organization, Platform con. Um, and this, of course, goes under the um, under the config block. So now here I say, hey, this project uses platform con, which we have just created here as our new organization. Awesome. So let's run this once again and let's see if that works. Termit run. So run a command, tofu plan. With tofu plan, we say like, hey, the plan that you create, out, put this into a file, drift.tf plan. And then we say Terramate, sync those files to Terramate Cloud as a drift run. Let's try our luck. This runs. Oh, and what we can see, we can see those plans here. And we can see it basically worked, right? And the reason why those plans give us a diff here is because we don't use any state right now, right? Um, on the Terminal Cloud, does the organization have to be public or can you allow, allow private organizations and repositories? You can absolutely allow private organizations and repositories and you cannot only do this from GitHub, but also from GitLab and from like, it doesn't matter. Um, so it can be uh, private, can be public repositories. That's really up to you. Um. Let's see if this worked. We can see here, now our dashboard changed. We have three drifted stacks. If I look here at the stacks, you can basically see, it shows me platform, platform con Q&A, platform con prod, and platform con dev as drifted stacks. And we can see the plan in here, right? We also see where this is coming from. So the repository, oh, we should probably fix this as in display bug here, should probably fix that. Um, and we also see the ID and the path of the stack, right? If I look here in this repository, it shows me exactly the same path. And the reason for that is we sync this metadata here to Termic Cloud. Yeah. Awesome. So now this gives me the ability to basically send drifts and send previews. Yeah to Terramate Cloud. And if we look at our preview, at our preview um, um, pipeline, so let's update this so that we basically use, so that we basically use the preview workflow here. So what we can do is, um, let me think about what am I supposed to do here. So basically I want to update this plan command and say like, hey, whenever there's a plan being created, sync this to the cloud. The cloud will then take and process this plan and send it to the pull request. So what this looks like is, hey, this is your pull request. 
request, right? And now there's a commit, create a new, create a, a plan uh, for changed stacks, maybe for changed stacks and whatnot. So now this will be, uh, let me move this here. This will be um, sent TerraMate Cloud processes this and gives me, and we'll look into this feedback back to my pull request, right? So now that means we have the plans in TerraMate Cloud. By the way, TerraMate CLI removes all sort of um, sensitive information. So we look at the plans. If there's any secrets or so, we just throw them out, right? You can see this in the open source CLI. So here, provide a provide a plan summary. All right. So let's get this working. If I go back to the workflow here, first of all, what I want to do is I want to basically uh, let me look at the cloud. I want to install integrations to GitHub app. So I'm going to connect this now to my workspace. Terramate.io for now all repositories, that's fine. And I can see that now GitHub app is connected. So now Terramate Cloud has permissions to send stuff back to the pull request. And next, what I want to do is if I go here in this pull request, all I really need to do, and by the way, all of this is very much detailed, documented with great examples that you can just copy paste. So um, you don't need to spend uh, so much time understanding all of this um, if you want to use that um, in our docs. Um, but what I want to do now is basically I want to now say like, okay, run in it. But more importantly, the, the plan command here, right? Um, sorry, this goes in here. So the plan command, what we want to do is, and I'm just going to make this a little bit more readable here um, so we can all follow. So what I'm saying is that um, basically first we add this flag continue on error. Yeah. So that means if any of those plans here, of those tofu plans fail, just continue and create a plan for all others. Doesn't matter if one fails, we want we always want to have all the plans, right? And also, you can perfectly do this in parallel now. Huh? So do this in parallel using five threads. Why? Because we sent the outputs to Terramate Cloud, Terramate Cloud will process all of those and order those and put them back to your pull request, right? And um, so what we need to do here is, all right, so we say we run the command tofu plan. The output of this plan will be put into a um, file output tf plan and then we use the detailed uh, detailed exit code from Terraform so that the Terramates orchestrator knows if it fails or not, right? And for us to sync this, what we do here is we say, hey, um, this is a uh, I think, oh, let me remember how this looks like. I need to check the con the, the documentation real quick. Um, uh, it's still good for time, by the way. Um, it took a lot longer explaining the basic concepts here, but uh, I hope that it's okay. All Right. So what we want to say is we want to say hey, this is sync the preview. So this is a preview, not a drift, right? And then use this tofu plan file out dot tf plan. Right? If you look back here at the CLI, tofu plan file, uh, sync drift status, this is sync preview. So if I now add this to the repository by saying, hey, get checkout, um, add previews to workflow, get status, 
And now I'm just gonna add this here. Hey, feed configure previews to use Terramate plan summaries. Configure previews to use Terramate plan summaries. Let's see what happens. So this should in theory not show any change because we have not changed anything in this commit in the stacks, I mean. But let's see what happens here. We'll look at the pipeline. Oh, we have changed stuff. And now this creates those previews for me, it looks like. So let's look at the pull request. And now you can see, we see pull requests in here, the resources, stacks, repository, when this happened, right? And a detailed plan. I can also jump in between the logs, etc. If we go back here, we see summary, right? This is coming from the GitHub app directly in the pull request, right? So now this is really cool. Why is this cool? Because most people don't know how to read Terraform plans, right? They will only ever want to have an indication hey, is there a destructive change or not, right? Um, so, or is there, is there you, do you add something? Do you delete something? Uh, so now what I want to do here is maybe we have enough time before we finish with the apply workflow. Um, I want to just add state because right now every single pull request will tell me like, <clears throat> this resource is, are new because we don't have any remote state, right? We have local state and the local state gets wiped. It's ephemeral in CI CD. So let's do this really, really quick. Um, what I'm going to do, and let me think about it. I will basically, I will basically add an, I think, as, let me see if I can do this <clears throat> in no time. Um, yeah, we just add an AWS a three bucket, and I already have one created, by the way. Um, so in the final result, I will give you the code where you can create the S three bucket, and then I use OIDC here, so credential as connection from TerraMate uh, from GitHub Actions to um, um, AWS. But basically what I want to do is I want to say like, hey, after this um, after this um, uh, uh, list stacks here, I want to add a specific workflow that um, configures AWS credentials um, and basically just authenticates to AWS. So all of this is already configured here, um, AWS account ID, et cetera. I have set this up before the call because that alone would take a long time. Um, but I will give you the code on how to do this yourself. And um, this basically says like, hey, authenticate, um, um, authenticate this, this GitHub Actions run with AWS so that um, um, so that you can communicate with the three bucket that is in here. And now what I also want to do is I want to add basically state management, so it open Tofu backend to every single stack. Um, so I'm going to add a file here called uh, backend generate. Let me see where do I have this other file? Yes, it's in the config. Let's do this in here. Uh, so I call this uh, a generate HCL backend.tf. And now um, what I will do I will basically just say like, okay, so what do we need in order to configure NS3 backend? We need a Terraform block, then we need a backend S3 in here. And we basically say like, okay, region, um, this could be, I think it's US East one. We can hard code this in here. It doesn't really matter. 
me see what region we use here, US East one. Um, we also set this to a bucket. Um, by the way, I just use something uh, that is called globals here. So globals and Terramate can be used to share configuration uh, uh, parameters. Um, and then we also want to give a key here. So um, in here we say, okay, the key of this state should probably say open tofu stacks. Um, oh, I'm totally in the wrong file here. My God, sorry for that. That should go in here. Um, open tofu stacks, and then we call. Uh, and now this is interesting. We can use Terramate stack data in here and uh, metadata in here, so I can say, hey, Terramate stack ID. So this will use the Terramate stack ID in the code generation, which is really nice if you want to um, um, if you want to use um yeah if, if you want to use the stack id in the state um by the way sean uh, i know you just asked for this we have examples for gcp um online i'll just if you just ping me on on, on linkedin after the workshop i'll just make sure to share this with you um so you can take a look here um same for azure by the way terraform.tf state huh so this is the key and then uh, let's say we also want to encrypt this and um, we probably want to use a DynamoDB table here. Um, and then we call this Terraform log or so. Yeah, this makes sense. So let me quickly run the format here. Um, now what this will do is in addition to this Terraform.tf, right? This will basically create a backend.tf in every single stack, filling it with this content and now all I want to do is I want to set this value here to basically say so this is just an example on we can dynamically configure values in code generation what I do is I go in the stacks directory I create a config.tm.htl in here and then a global block um, globals and I call this terraform terraform uh, what was this uh, Backend. Uh, let me quickly look at this. Um, backend bucket. Um, and then we call this bucket. And this should be named. Um, what is the name of the bucket that I created? Um, give me a second. Please bear with me. This should be called. Ah, oh, yeah, here we go. Um, Terramate example Terraform state backend, right? The nice thing here is because I use globals now, you can basically exchange this. If you bring your own bucket, you can put the value in here. Then you run Terramate generate. And now what you can see, this backend.tf file has been generated in every single stack. So now we have a backend configuration in here, right? A three backend. And what this is saying, basically, this is saying, okay, use the ID CD6 of each stack as the key. And that's awesome because now we can move stacks up and down the directory tree. We never break the state, right? Because the ID is unique among a project. Let's check this in and see if this works. Get add, get commit, add S3 state backend. We push this to the add previous to workflow. We push this to the current pull request. And we go back in here and in a minute, GitHub Actions should pick this up again, and in term, a cloud should pick this up again too. So let's look at the action. I'm very curious to see if this now works. Usually there's always some trouble with AWS authentication, and I hope I configured this correctly before the workshop. Um, I didn't. Um, initialize the backend. No valid credential source found. 
open tofu in it. Let me see what I did wrong here. Um, thinking about it. So, install open tofu. Oh, seems. Let me look at this. List change stacks, configure AWS credentials. So this changed. I have a typo here in the if statement. Um, that could, by the way, uh, easily uh, uh, take uh, taken me a couple of hours to spot. It's usually the the um, yeah needle in the haystack. Uh, but I, I have an uh, uh, I have a typo here in the list changed uh, a condition. Um, and the stacks is missing. That's why the authentication is never running. Uh, thanks God, I've already ran into this issue at least a thousand times. Um, that's why I'm aware of it. So I'm just going to append this commit here and then git push. I push this once again, force push. Let's see if it works now. Back to the pull request. The second thing that we need to do here, obviously, in a second, is to create the um, um, um create the apply workflow because on merge back to main we want to apply and uh, existing workspace status errors free or the bucket your temperature access must be addressing with a specified endpoint. Uh, 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 what is this? Let's see. Specified endpoint. I need to check this out. Is this created in a different region? Okay, let's look at this. US East one. I don't think so. Um, checking. You, oh yeah, <laughs> funny. It's US East one, not US West one. Um, all right, so moving to the East Coast here. Let's generate this code again. And, oh, actually not in this file, but in here, in the config, of course. US East one. And you know what? Let's just make this configurable because you will probably use something different. Backend region. So we set this uh, global Terra from backend region. And what we say here is, hey, if this is not defined as a global, then just default to US East one. So now another cool side effect here, what you just learned is you can use Terraform functions in Terraform code generation using um, 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 using tm try um, uh, using tm underscore prefixes, right? So this is really cool for us to um, 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 to basically use and evaluate functions, Terraform functions and code generation. And um, if you don't want us to evaluate it, just ditch the prefix, right? All right, terminate generate. So now this will update all the backend files. If I look in here, you can see US East one, get status. I'm gonna add this and then get commit fix update backend to US East one. So now if I push this, get push. We should hopefully get to somewhere. Let's see if this is working now. I can't believe it. Working out of the box. Now we have remote state activated. This is great. Awesome. So this works. Now state is set up. 
and what we'll do next so we actually have a functioning project here let's add the apply workflow and for that what we do is we'll copy a bunch of things around here um okay let me just format this um so we'll just copy we'll just copy this workflow and now where we update it is basically saying like hey open tofu deploy deploy open tofu changes and change stacks and now what i want to do here is I basically want to sync this as a deployment. So let me quickly look at the docs, how to do this. Um, just so I'm fully aware that I'm doing the right thing here. Um, deploy, er, 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 here we go. Okay, so now what I'm saying is that, hey, so we basically say not tofu plan. We already planned this in the previews, right? Um, but we run, in, we were running apply instead. Uh, apply. And we also say we don't expect any inputs here. And we also say we just, for now, auto approve this. So we're not going to store the plan anywhere. Um, also we'll just auto approve this. That makes sense. And then what I'm going to do here is, so we can also do this in parallel. And now I want to say, Hey, do not sync it preview, but sync it deployment. Huh? And sync this tofu plan file. Huh? And use an plan out.tf plan. Uh, what we could do now, we could basically just use the plan that we store, but because we apply our merge back to main, we're totally fine to plan again in the apply workflow. So let me just put this in here. Run open tofu plan, run open tofu deploy. So it does a new plan on merge back to main for this specific commit. Um, we do not want to sync this here though as a preview. And let me think about it. We do want to do this in parallel. Yeah, this looks good. And then we want to apply exactly this specific plan. Awesome. So I will add those now and say feed at deploy workflow. Git push add previous. Awesome. Yeah. Um, by the way, in GCS, uh, in the GCS example, uh, because you just asked for this here, and we also do have an example with um, with OIDC. So basically, what we try to do is we try to use OIDC whenever possible over long living credentials. Long living credentials just suck. They are, they're insecure. People never rotate them. They get leaked and stuff. It's just not state of the art, right? In 2024, we shouldn't use static credentials whenever possible. That's also why, like, I mean, I don't, I haven't showed like any sort of API keys or so you with Terra, maybe because like we do um, OIDC, so credentialless or short living credentials everywhere. Let's look at the pull request. There's a mistake here, an error on the actual deploy. Aha, there seems to be, this seems to be triggering. And the reason why this is triggering is that actually we don't want this to trigger on pull request, but of course on push back to main. So right now I had the uh, preview as well as the deploy and um, workflows running, which is nonsense. So let's add this change. 
And then Terraform basically said like, hey, there's already another process doing a plan here. So it just failed. Um, fix. You know what? I'm just running an amend. And now I push this. And I need to force push. So what is happening now is we should have the pipeline passing here. So this is the plan pipeline. And we have 15 more minutes. Um, I think we'll manage to finish in time. Uh, it took it a little bit longer. I thought I would be done in 90 minutes. And um, yeah, then I basically uh, started explaining things in a very detailed manner. But I hope it makes sense. Um, so let's look here at this pull request. It's green. We can see the changes in Ceramic Cloud. Let's look at this. Awesome. I see here TOEFL previews. Uh, we can see what has changed here. That's really cool. Um, I can also look at the logs. So by the way, we can change here between like showing actual diffs, um, like rendered diffs in plans, logs, and then ASCII plans. Um, and now what I want to do is I want to merge this. And if I merge this, in theory, this should deploy those plans and save it in a state file. So let's do this. Uh, you never know because we haven't tested that. Um, we haven't tested the workflows may fail. Um, let's look at this. So that's the same, right? It installs the dependencies. Sets up the credentials, works. Open Tofu in it. Open Tofu plan on change stacks. And it fails. Why does it fail? Execution failed. Er, er. Access status two. Oh yeah. Um, I think I have an idea. There's a misconfiguration in the pipeline. Okay, checking it out. Let's look at this really quick. Main get pull origin main. So. This is the pipeline part that I fed, I assume. Yes, the run tofu plan. And the reasoning for this is that we have a detailed access code here configured. And the problem is that now if Terraform creates a plan, Terraform will return this exit uh, code too which in this specific case, we don't because we don't have continue on error here configured in a TerraMate orchestrator, will break the flow. Yeah? That's why we remove this from here. It's actually not needed in the apply phase. Let me double check this once again. Check out, fix workflow, get status, get add. And now we say, hey, fix. Um, fix the deploy workflow to not fail if plans are created. Get up for request create. So interesting thing is, and it's a nice side effect now for us to see, because we're using GitOps here, um, the Terramate change detection, actually the way that the change detection works is it does not detect if something has been successfully applied or so, it detects what changes have been conducted in a recent commit branch or pull request, right? But if the deploy fails, Terramate can't detect this. It's impossible because Terramate does not have any access to your cloud infrastructure. So in here, now it says like, oh, you know what? There's no plan changes, right? Because um, um, the um, because the current commit which we introduced in the current in the current branch um, does not contain any changes to the stacks. So if I want to re-trigger the stacks without changing any code, what I can say is Terramate experimental trigger. Now let's say stacks dev 
Um, I can, by the way, also recursively trigger all stacks here or a subset of stacks. And now I can say, so this will create a tick trigger that always marks stacks as changed, even though they don't contain any changes. Feed trigger stacks. Get push. Um, get push origin fix workflow. So I do this. I go back in here. I'm really proud of the ones that uh, are still following here, by the way. Um, one hour and 50 minutes in. You guys are doing great. Um, let's wait for this to finish. See if the pipeline is running here. So the tofu plants are running. Awesome. We can see a new pull request here created in Terramic Cloud. Four chain stacks, right? Because I just changed all the stacks with a trigger. If I look here at the pull request, you can see it's a second pull request. I get all the plants. And now if I merge it, hopefully the pipeline runs because we're running out of time. Now it should actually deploy the changes and write it to the S3 state. And by the way, you can uh, uh, use multiple credentials here, multiple AWS accounts, multiple GC uh, and Google Cloud accounts. You can also manage AWS, Google Cloud, Terraform, Open Tofu in a single repository. It doesn't matter, right? Terrain is like a framework that enables you to build your way of managing infrastructure. And it's very dynamic, right? We give you the right tools. Um, we give you uh, orchestration, code generation, etc. Here we go. It deploys the changes. I can't believe it. On time. 10 minutes to 9. 10 minutes to go. The pipeline passes. We look in Terminal Cloud for deployment and we say, hey, there's been a deployment with four stacks. Finished 30 seconds ago. Triggered by me. Right? And I can look in here and see the actual plans that have been applied. The logs and whatnot. So let's finish this up. Let's just test that the state has been stored. I pull in git pull origin main, the latest changes. And all I want to do now is actually, I want to set up a more complex, um, a more complex infrastructure. So let's say Terraform, Terraform AWS modules VPC. Let's use Anton's modules here. Um, like he's doing a lot of great things for the community. So Anton is constantly um, creating new Terraform modules. Um, I know that he's not the biggest Open Tofu fan, um, but it doesn't matter. Um, he's been really contributing so much to the open source community. I know so many people that use his models and in incredible. So um, let's remove the null file, the null, the null resource that we have here in the dev environment. Let's just use this module as it is, pre-configured. Go back to um, uh, Visual Code Studio and we add this here and we call this platform con VPC. No code generation used, just plain Terraform. Um, in a follow-up session, we can discuss how to make this more dynamic. And now I create a new, a new branch, add a VPC, get status, get add, get commit, feed, add a new VPC in dev. Get up pull request, create, add a new VPC in dev. Almost finished. So now, what we should be able to see here, this pull request should basically tell us there is only a change in one stack in dev, right? To add a VPC and to remove a null resource. 
and this will work now because the state is stored in a three backend. So let's see if everything is up and running. I will not deploy this VPC here. Um, I'll leave the pull request open as an example. So Termic Cloud sees that there's a pull uh, plan being sent to the cloud. And then let me know if there's any more questions. Um, I've already answered a, a decent bunch here. Um, what you can see now, basically this tells me, hey, this pull request contains a destructive change. And it contains a destructive change because we're destroying a null resource here, right? We remove this from the code, hence we remove it from the state, and instead we deploy VPC, right? So if I go in here and turn my cloud, I can basically see this on a stack basis here now, right? So this says like, oh, destructive permissions. And I can see this is the stack. We have to preview here, render plan. You can switch to the logs, right? To really see what's going on, see the ASCII plan in here, et cetera. If I merge this back to main now, right? This would deploy VPC. I will not do this, um, um, but I think we can be quite proud of ourselves uh, because in less than two hours, we've set up an entire open tofu project from scratch, really, without anything, without any pipelines, without any any configuration, any stacks. We've added uh, a Terramate. Uh, we've added open tofu. We've added an S3 backend. We've added GitHub Actions pipelines. And uh, we have a fully functional project up and running that, um, yeah, now could scale to hundreds or thousands of stacks because we use change detection. And you can see this because, hey, in here, we already see that the change stacks, we only ever change the stack dev. So in theory, in theory, I could have different pull requests open now, introducing changes to other stacks, and it will scale very, very well, right? Because nothing is conflicting, and with change detection, everything runs in parallel. So orchestration has been added, code generation has been added. Let me know if there's any questions. Um, other than that, what I'm going to do for you guys is um, I will turn the recording into a script. Um, I will stop my sh uh, screen sharing for now. And I will send this out to each of you via email. Um, um, so you can basically copy paste this if you want to um, um, or adjust this to your own needs. Um, if there's any questions, right? I mentioned it early in the call. Um, you can basically always reach me or almost always reach me. Let me get this slide up here. Um, on X or on LinkedIn, um, and just get in touch. I'd love to help. Right here. And other than that, I want to say thank you for tuning in. Um, we've managed to do the entire thing in two hours. I thought I would be faster. Um, but hopefully I wasn't too fast so you guys could understand what we were doing here. And uh, yeah, we've built a whole open tofu, GitHub Actions, Terramay project from scratch, um, uh, which is probably um, a lot more sufficient um, than most of the stuff that you find out there. So um, yeah, let me know if there's any questions. Um, we'll close here shortly. Um, feel free um, um, to ask me follow-up questions in the Slack or in, in our Discord, Terramate IO Discord. As a, it's a Discord that you can join or the platform um, engineering community. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Um, other than that, I'm wishing all of you a great uh, evening or midday, morning, wherever you are in the US or in America. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Really appreciate it. And thanks for spending the time with me. Have a good one. Bye-bye.